Hi there, I'm Sarah Defoe from My Business Bubble. You Bring Change starts with you as an individual, as a professional, as an entrepreneur, and as a business owner. How you think, feel, act, and do, and how you influence others. The conversations you have, everything that you do brings change. And it's time to take accountability and responsibility for how you initiate or instigate change. Now that could be at home, it could be at work, it could be in looking after your mental and physical health, it could be in supporting the environment and doing more. Collective change is all around how you collaboratively work with others and how you collectively come up with change and how you drive that and support that change together. And then when we look at system and process change, this is all around how you are changing your ways of working, changing your procedures like health and safety, a very big thing due to COVID-19, and how you are leading others and enabling them through change. COVID-19 and this pandemic has presented the need in business for us to think differently every day, to innovate, create and, and change and evolve. But for a lot of businesses, that's a very big ask, especially if they've been operating for a long time um, and um, are very set on their ways of working and um, with the operating model. Over the past five to six months, I've been working with quite a few different businesses uh, in the tourism sector or who have been hit by COVID-19. I've also been consulting in businesses um, and working with professionals that have had to um, react and disrupt um, and change um, due to COVID-19. So success things that work well um, that I've learnt are collaboration and working together. Change um, brings about fear in different people, so different people adapt to change at a different pace. So it's really important to look at the human-centred side of change, um, and that's certainly a hard lesson I've had to learn. It's not about dictating change, um, but the other thing is that if you do have, as a manager, if you have um, designated a leader to lead others through change, it's really important to support and enable them rather than step in. To think that there will not be conflict, to think that people will not be upset due to change um, is not really the best um, kind of perception because that is exactly what change does. It lifts people from that state that they've been very comfortable in and it leads them through um, a journey where they have to think and act and do things differently. So that will bring about some form of conflict, some form of confusion, um, and some form of disruption and a lot of fear. So if you are looking at change, respect the fact that it's going to bring about some of those um, challenges. The other thing when it comes to uh, you know, designating somebody to lead through that change. If you're looking at a team, they will naturally, or anyone, even a community, will naturally go through that sort of forming, storming, norming and performing process in the journey. So it's really important if you're at this level and you've designated somebody at this level to lead that change, try not to step in and disrupt that process. It's really important that a team gets to go through challenges because it makes their relationship stronger and it helps them deal with problem sets and challenges together. So uh, you're, not, you're actually disabling rather than enabling. So it's really important that people get that opportunity to um, you know, work through those fears, work through those challenges and come out the other side to success together unless it's really, really critical. Uh, the other thing that I've learned about change is that you can get quick wins and quick things in place, but change does take a bit of time. Um, especially if you're dealing with um, people that have to fundamentally change their business models or fundamentally change how they work and do their jobs every day um, and any and especially when it comes to technology, right? So adopting technology if historically they hadn't had the need to. 
So there are some things that I think when it comes to change that are really, really important. Um, protecting your um, company culture is really important, but also remember that if people are going through those phases I talked about, they're also going to be helping you build a different working culture as well. And again, that cannot be dictated. It's something that organically has to take place. So you bring change, you as an individual, um, maybe think about 2021 and how you, you know you can do a 360 view around yourself and how you can bring positive change um, and then looking at collective change. Any initiatives that are in flight or, or strategically if you're looking at um, some workshops you need to put in place to drive that change or start that uh, journey, maybe think about how you can positively work um, with people and get the right uh, leaders in place with that capability to help and enable people through that change and transformation. Um, then let's work through the kind of the system and the process and the uh, infrastructure type of changes. So operational change, um, you know, health and safety procedures, COVID-19, and if you're getting ready for those borders opening, testing um, operationally what that change journey looks like for those international customers. Uh, if you're looking at the domestic market and you've had to diversify or change your business model to target and optimise that local dollar, then uh, definitely look at that for 2021 or immediately because at the end of the day, um, simplifying your proposition or diversifying is going to need to be a huge focus because it's, it's quite competitive out there. Um, but the other thing too is that it's going to take a little bit more of that innovative and creative thinking. So get more of those sorts of people uh, into your team. Now, uh, the other thing too is that, uh, just one more uh, thing is that some people may not want to change at all. Um, and that's a huge learning curve for them in their professional career. One thing I've learned is that uh, if you have a, a team that do not absolutely want to change, it's time to place them in, you know, into a journey that's going to enable them and lead them on a better career path. Um, you're only as good as your team when it comes to change. And uh, one thing I've learned is that I've tried to help grow people into uh, and used a project to help grow uh, capability and, and to Im increase skill sets but a lot of the time uh, that can hold um, a project back and, and if you're okay with that that's great um, but it can be disruptive for other members in the team as well. So if you want things done fast and if you would like uh, you know expert people and capable people to do that then make sure you select a great group that can do that immediately. If you've got a team that needs to grow and you need to upskill and build on their capability, maybe not use those um, time critical initiatives to do that because that's when you get that high level of conflict. So change and transformation is an exciting thing, it's something that's happening but it starts with you and it starts with you thinking about the right people, thinking about the right conversations and thinking about the right approach to change and transformation. Now I've put together some one-on-ones, I've put together some team workshops to support you in 2021 um, but until then hey thank you very much uh, to those out there that have trusted me and what I've brought to the table and um, for enabling me to be part of your change journey. Um, I've um, been quite honoured actually to be part of that process and I've had the privilege to work with some outstanding individuals. So I look forward to working with you or reconnecting with you again in 2021. Until then have a safe and magical Christmas and hopefully we can have a prosperous 2021. Ka kite Thank you.